Hello, my name is Larry Tatum, and welcome to my video on Kempo Forms. In this particular video, I'm going to teach you how to do Long Form 2. So far, we've learned Short 1, Short 2, and Long 1. Now, Long Form 2 is similar to Short Form 2 in that it uses both sides simultaneously, but we're using short range as well as long range weapons. So it gets a little involved. And we're going to be a little more diversified in our angles as we cover both 90 and 45 degree angles. There's a lot of line reinforcement in this particular form as well. That means moving back and forth on the same line to possibly go back to an attacker you may have left behind to reinforce a technique to add in a move. All right. Also, long form two becomes more lengthy than uh, long form one. So it's going to increase your memory. And I've found that in the Kempo system, that as the memory increases, your ability to pick and choose techniques to fit in a street situation is far greater than if you didn't learn your katas. All right, now I'm going to start out showing you this particular kata. It, it will start from a salutation, like they all do. It's going to be long form two, so we're going to use two fingers. And they're not in short two position, but they're in long two position, so they're straight out. We'll use the index and the middle finger. We're going to do both right and left side. Now the sides are not separately done, but like short form two, they're interwoven. Now we do the right side, the left side. We make our salutation, we make our salute. Back to back, pull it, bring it up, make it mold down, wipe it off, and bow, as you've learned in the other tapes. We open up our horse stance, left hand over right. Now from this position, like short form two, we're going to move the body in position of the checking hand. While we move the body in, we're going to circle now an inward block, but it's not going to be a regular inward where we go all the way out and then move to a hand sword. But we're going to circle that block around and make our hand sword. So we're making a circle, and then a hand sword evolves out of that circle. The checking hand now becomes a finger poke as we pivot from a neutral into a right forward bow. At this point, we're going to pivot back to our neutral bow and execute a vertical hand sword thrust into the lower stomach solar plexus of our opponent. Now, if you'll notice my hands, at this point, the checking hand and the right hand begin to cross. And if you extend this line out of my left hand, you get an X or a multiplication sign at this point. As you notice where my left hand the checking hand covers the right arm, the arms begin to cross, and they form an X shape or a multiplication sign. And you'll find that this is prevalent throughout the form. All right, now, the next move is that the striking hand stays there as the body moves up to it, becomes the now the checking hand as I roll the block in, execute the hand sword off that circle, poke to the eye, and then thrust to the solar plexus, and again, there's that cross or that multiplication sign if you extend that line a little further. Now from this point, I draw back my hands to my right hip, cup and saucer, as I go into a left 45 degree cat stance. I extend my left leg over just a little past nine o'clock so that I'm in a left reverse bow. I pivot into a left forward bow simultaneously, thrust punch the right hand and a left vertical outward. From this point, I thrust my left arm out into a thrust punch and cock my right hand back without pivoting at the feet. From here, I execute a right thrust punch and bring my left hand back to my hip. And I, so far, it doesn't look like we have checks. But if you remember, in long form one, there are a lot of hidden checks in these moves. From here, I execute a left vertical snap punch as I simultaneously execute a low left thrust heel kick. And, they, and it works like this. You don't shift your weight up. But rather, you pretend like somebody threw the floor out, or pulled the floor out beneath your feet, and it looks something like this. It, this came up, made a short side kick. At the same time, this vertical punch went out. So it looks something like this. Now, I go to a right front cat stance. And you notice that my hand's cocked to my left hip now. I extend my right leg over just a little past three. Execute the same moves on this side, though. The opposites. Left thrust punch, right vertical, outward block. Punch again with my right hand, cock the other hand back. 
Punch with my left hand. Again, here comes this short jab and side kick at the same time. All right, normally, when I came from this position, I crossed my hands over, and I would step back approximately to 6 o'clock. You're not going to be able to see what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to align that a little bit off at an angle so that you can see. At this point, I have a left downward block, a right inward block. It's called a universal block. It's a common name for it. But I pivot into a left neutral bow into that universal block. From here, I go into a left forward bow as I simultaneously do a left upward parry and a right hammer fist, you might say, down to the opponent's groin area. And watch the pivot. Now, I'll go to 6 o'clock like I was supposed to. Here it goes. But then I pivot, and I look towards 8 o'clock as I do the parry and a hammer fist. From this point, I pivot to 8 o'clock into a horse stance as I simultaneously cock my right hand underneath my left, claw the face with my left hand, five finger claw. From here, I execute three diagonal back knuckles. Now, I slide my foot over, reverse my hands, and do a left over right universal block facing you, 12 o'clock. From this point, I now turn towards a 45 degree, which in this case is 10 o'clock, do a right upward parry and a left hammer fist as I go into a right forward bow. At this point, I claw to the face as I pivot to my horse facing 10 o'clock. One, two, three back knuckles. And they're both on diagonals, all three rather, on diagonals. At this point, I cover with my right foot approximately to 10 o'clock. And I drop down to a left downward block that keeps looping overhead and becomes a looping overhead strike, or what we call a snaking punch, towards 4 o'clock. It stops here, go to a forward bow, cock the hand back, and as I go to the forward bow, I do a right thrust punch. At this point, I simultaneously do a left punch and a right ball kick. Then I plant out of it into a right neutral bow with a short left jab. Watch it again. The looping overhead punch, the strike, the kick and punch, and the punch again. Now at this point, I cover with my left leg into the action over towards 45 degree angle over towards 8 o'clock. I circle around my right hand, which turned first into a downward block, and then I brought it up, execute my punch into a forward bow, and then I kick punch combination again. And drive it down into a left neutral bow. Now we're going to reinforce and start working back and forth on the same line. Now here I'm going to cross over from 8 o'clock over to 2 o'clock. And as I do a left front crossover, I'm going to do an overhead punch, horizontal punch with my left hand, keeping my right hand cocked to my hip. As I step out into a right neutral bow, there's that double factor again we learned in the other katas. I execute an extended outward block. All right, it looks somewhat like an upward block, but it doesn't go that high. So we're going to call it an extended outward block into a right neutral bow. From here, I'm going to execute threes. And here's that pattern of threes again. But as I execute it, you see that X shape that comes in, or that multiplication sign. We go one finger poke. And as I do it, I go into a forward bow. I execute another finger poke. And notice that it's just my index finger that's poking, and then three. There's the third one. Now, after the third one, I cock my right hand back, do a right front crossover on a 45 to 10 o'clock with that overhead punch. Double factor is employed here. Make my block still in my neutral bow. Go to my forward bow. One, two, stay in the forward bow. Three. And you notice that these arms overlap each other. Now, from here, I'm going to take my left leg and step back to 4 o'clock and do a left inside downward palm facing up. But I'm going to keep my eyes looking straight at 10 o'clock as I draw it back. Now from that position, I'm going to unwind into a right vertical thrust punch. I execute a right inside downward block, palm up, unwind again into a left neutral bow, and execute a left vertical thrust punch. Now from here, I'm going to take my right leg, cover all the way around to 8 o'clock. 
As I do, I'm going to circle my right hand coming to the inside of my body, inside downward, the palm is facing down. Bring it up and over as if I was doing an outward overhead elbow. At that point, the elbow comes down, I execute a left vertical back knuckle. From here, I step back, do the same thing on the right side, where's the elbow, and there's the back knuckle. I'm in a right neutral bow, and I'm facing what? If you're 12, I'm facing two o'clock. At this point, I pivot into a right forward bow and execute a left push down block. Now, from this point here, I'm going to pivot an in place twist stance, or a rotating twist stance, it could be called, into a right twist stance, and I cock my left hand up to my right ear. At this point, I step out into a left neutral bow and claw with my left hand. Now I go to a forward bow on this side with a push down. I twist, bring my right hand up to my left ear this time, step out and claw the face. Now here's a pattern of threes. We do it another time. Third time, push down, forward bow. Twist stance, step out and claw. All right, now working on this same line, I go to a left forward bow and execute a right front thrust punch. From that position, I pivot back to my neutral and watch my rear foot pivot as I execute a left inward forearm strike using this part of the arm here. My right hand cocks to my hip. From this position, I take my left leg, drop back to a twist stance, checking simultaneously with the striking hand, now becomes a checking hand. I unwind into a right neutral bow with a right inward overhead elbow. Drop back with my right leg, check with my right hand. All right, from this position, I unwind and do a left inward overhead elbow. Now from here, I take my left leg, step over, do a right inward elbow with a sandwiching effect, pull the elbows apart and do two outward elbows horizontally. From here, I do a left upward elbow and a right back elbow, and then I make my close. Come to attention, salute out, pull it back, wipe it off, and you're done with the kata. Now with the help of Sebastian, I'm going to show you some concepts and principles that will help you understand this kata a little better. And like all the previous katas and the ones I'm going to do after this, I'm going to highlight certain areas of it so that uh, the form has more meaning. All right, now you'll notice that in the beginning of this kata, I stepped in and we rotated the arm in a circle. Now generally, I would say, well, that's kind of a waste of time. Don't we in Kimpo like the economized motion? For instance, if Sebastian gave a right punch, wouldn't I normally block and slip off? Or besides the block, just use a check and a block simultaneously all right, to expedite the situation. Yes, that's true, and that's how we've been trained. But now, at this point, why would we use a pulling circle? Well, let's take a situation. Sebastian, come over here. Put your right leg back. If Sebastian punched, and let's say that I didn't have use of this backhand. Let's say, for instance, his friend had it locked behind my back. And if Sebastian punched, I've got to do something that's not just enough just to step in and block it. All right, I don't have a checkup. I can't put my, this hand up as a check. And if it was a type of a hooking block and I used one hand, it's still more likely going to hook into me. So what I can do is what we call frictional pull. And that's the friction of my arm hooking or pulling off a circle. It catches on and the friction of it actually pulls Sebastian in. And what that pull does is it puts Sebastian's body at such an angle, an angle of cancellation, that the left hand is far enough back that it gives me time to go ahead and use a strike. Now watch it again. As I move in, I pull it. And if I had my hand locked behind my back, I could pull it in, circle it, make my hand sort. All right, now it just gives you another way of checking. You can pull, and it's called frictional pull. It's a good way of using it. Now, we're going to take it a step fur further. Now we start the kata, Sebastian comes in, we pull it in, rotate it, make our chop, poke to the eye, catch him here. Now, when people get hit, if they haven't gone down, there's a tendency, a definite tendency to grab the weapon that's striking them at the time. If this happens, we can take the left side of this technique 
and then use the left side. So as I step through, I can step through and sweep the leg and break the elbow as I pull it, make my chop, make my eye poke, and then catch him on the bottom. As I cock my hands to my cat stance, again, that cocking motion can break the elbow and sweep his leg at the same time. Watch it again. We move in with the right side of this technique. He grabs. Let's just make that a what if, or for instance. My step through becomes a what? A sweep. The inward block becomes a what? A break on the elbow, a chop, poke to the eye, catch him in the ribs. My cat stance now becomes what? A sweep. Watch my bottom leg again from here to this position as well. Now that gives you an idea, thank you Sebastian, of how this beginning motion has more meaning. And now you're starting to learn that the left side of motion can play a very important part if you get tangled up on the right side. OK, let's take another section of this form and play around with it a little bit. Now you know the part where I step over and I do a downward block, a looping overhead strike, punch, and then a kick punch. All right, let's play with that a little bit. Sebastian, let's say if Sebastian came from this angle with a right ball kick. And as he came, I made my block, my downward block. As he planted, he decided to follow up with a punch. Well, this can become a strike to the back of the elbow, or it can just hook around to clear the arm. Now watch it again. I use a downward block, pop, catch this, and possibly catching the face. At this point now, I'm going to parallel his arm somewhat with a punch. And I'm not going to actually punch the ribs, but I'm going to break the elbow by making this a fulcrum and coming up against the elbow joint at this point. All right, now, if you watch it again, I go one, two, three. Now, in the next move, you remember when the hand cocks back, it doesn't look like a check, but in the other tape, I showed you in long form one that a returning hand can be a pulling hand. And as it pulls, I can simultaneously punch to the head and kick to the inside of the knee. As I plant down, the returning hand at this point becomes a what? A check as I punch. Now watch it again. We sure first execute it, catch this part here, or snap the elbow possibly, coming through, bam, coming down, and making our shot. Thank you, Sebastian. These will give you ideas. They're not rules, like I've always said, but for this particular video, it serves its purpose. That motion can be used for a completely different technique. It can be used for grappling. It can be used for miscellane. Miscellane refers to striking movements, grabs and holds, chokes, whatever. So the motion, like I said, is universal. It's multidimensional. What I'm going to do now is take the form. I'm going to do it at a side angle before we finish this tape so that you can get a, another view at it and see what we're doing. Explore all the ideas. I hope this, again, going into this in a little more detail, was helped to you. Take it slow. Now, this particular kata has more comparative angles that you have to think about. And remember in the other tapes, I was saying that you have to watch the complementary angles to make sure that your form is in perfect form, so to speak. Because with perfect form, then you have what? Power, you have economy of motion, and you have balance, and that's just to name a few. This particular kata is long enough that can be used in a small tournament. I've had a number of students use this particular kata, and they've done well in small tournaments with it. But this kata will teach you the lines that you need to use when you're learning twist stances and different downward blocks, covering multi-angles, 45 degree angles, 90 degree angles, and so forth. And right, I'm going to take it. I want you to watch it from the side. I'm not going to do the salutation. You've seen that. But I am going to start the kata from here. OK, follow along, and I'll do it from the side.
Hope you enjoyed the tape. I look forward to seeing you on the next tape. The next tape we're going to do, short form three. It gets interesting. So I look forward to seeing you there.